Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Kingsway Church Midweek Message. Hey, we are now in the midst of a brand new year, and and uh, last week I know you had some good stuff from my daughter and my son-in-law, and I'm, I'm so thankful that they were able to do that, but I'm glad to be back with you this evening. I'm ready to bring you some encouragement, uh, ready to just encourage you to, to look forward to some great things that I believe that will take place in 2021. Can you believe it? I mean, wow, it's like... Uh, a brand new year every year that goes by I always look back and I'm like man I, it's hard to I'm another year older and you are too and uh, that's okay because uh, that's the way that it works and we're here but we're here for a purpose folks and we're here to make a difference in people's lives our life is not just our own the Bible tells us that we've been bought with a price and so that means that uh, somebody else owns us and that person is the Lord. And so we've been bought by his blood. And so we're here to make a difference for the kingdom of God. And that looks different for different people. Um, but uh, ultimately, that is what the goal is. And so I'm here to hopefully bring you some encouragement that I believe will lift you up and uh, get you prepared for 2021. I'm ready to, I'm ready to see some, some good things. You know, um, I know that every year uh, has challenges, some more than others, and, and then there's uh, some years that, you know, things don't go exactly like what we planned, and, and, uh, but here's the thing is every year is unique and different, and every day within that year is unique and different, and, uh, but every day that we have is a gift from God, and God's going to help us to be able to achieve everything that we need to achieve. So I want to get started this evening and I want to talk about somebody here and we'll jump into this together. So if you're watching tonight, go ahead. You can like the page. You can also share this so that other people will be able to be encouraged as well. And we would encourage you to do that. Galatians chapter 6 verse 1 says, Brethren or brothers, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual restore such a one that in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself or else you'll also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man thinks himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. And be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap uh, life everlasting. Verse 9, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. I want to talk this evening just a little bit about due season. Have you ever heard the phrase, uh, you know, you are due, meaning that it's your time is coming? Uh, you know, I, I, we just, uh, I got to watch this, this weekend, this past weekend, some of the uh, playoffs in the, uh, in the NFL, and one thing that came to my mind was the Cleveland Browns. Uh, for, of course, anybody that knows me knows I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan, and boy, could I say that we are ever due. We're, we're due, right? Um, but the Cleveland Browns were due as well. They hadn't been in the playoffs for quite a number of years, and then they hadn't won a playoff game in an even longer period of time than that. And, and not only did they make the playoffs, but they also won a playoff game. And so you could say that they were due. In other words, there was enough time that had passed that uh, it meant that it was time for them to, to, to win a game, be in a playoff and win some games. Well, that's kind of what he's saying here when he says and let us be weary let us not be weary in well doing don't get tired of doing the right thing for in due season when it's when the time is due you'll reap now notice this he uses the word if we faint not now the word if is a conditional word just the same way that you're saved conditionally now I know people think sometimes well but we're saved Unconditional. It's God's unconditional love that we're saved. And that is true. God's love for us is unconditional. But God's love in and of itself does not save humanity. 
and you say, well, what do you, I don't know if I believe that or not. Well, you have to believe the scripture. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth, and if you believe, or if you, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But notice how he started off that proclamation about being saved. He said, if you believe in your heart, and if you confess with your mouth that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Well, what if you do not believe in your heart? What if you do not confess with your mouth? Would it be fair to say that you would not be saved? Uh, he's using that word as a conditional word. So if means if you do this, then this will happen. So he says, for in due season you will reap, you shall Shall is the strongest affirmative positive word that you can use. He didn't say if, um, in verse 9, for in due season you might reap if you faint not. He said you shall reap, meaning it's a guarantee that you will reap if you don't faint or if you don't give up. And in the God's Word translation, it says just that, if we don't give up. In the message translation, it says, if we don't give, give up and quit. So in other words, he's saying that we have to stay with, uh, uh, working with God. We have to stay believing God and trusting God. That's the way that our due season is going to come. And I know that some of you have probably went through the year 2020 in such a terrible, difficult, challenging year that it, that it was. And you might be thinking, man, that was just the worst. I'm, I don't know how I'm going to survive. I, I didn't do well, and I'm just ready to let go and give up. Well, folks, that's exactly what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to give up. He wants you to faint. He, he, he wants you to let go of your belief in God and your trust in God because he knows if he can let, get you to let go and give up and quit, then he knows that he has won because, again, he says here, uh, in verse 9, and let us not be weary in well doing, doing, for in due season, that due season doesn't mean like today necessarily or tomorrow. Due season means that it is coming though. In due season, we shall reap if we don't give up and quit. If we don't give up and quit, we're going to reap, and God is in the reaping, and He's in the business of blessing His people. And so when we don't give up, we don't let go of, of his hand, uh, that means that God is going to show up big for us. And I want to encourage you this evening to not give up. I want to encourage you to, to not faint and not let go. I know you get tired, and I know you'd like to see results immediately, and I do too. Uh, the, the, the human tendency is we want to see something happen right now, we don't want to wait for a while, but that's not really the way that it works, is it? It does require faith and patience in order to get to the place of being able to reap what God has in store for us. And it also means this, that you'll have to discipline yourself. In order to not give up and not faint, that means that your thought process is always under attack about trying to get you to give up. Before you give up, you thought about giving up. I want you to think about that. Before you actually gave up, you had to think about giving up. The thought crossed your mind and you said, well, I'm tired. It ain't working. I don't see the results that I want. Um, I've been walking with God all these years and I'm not blessed or I haven't seen this come to pass. You started thinking about it before it actually happened, before the event of giving up actually happened. So that means you'll have to discipline the way that you think and then also uh, what came from your thinking was your speaking. You, you, you didn't just magically say something out of your mouth. You thought about it first. You thought about giving up. You thought about letting go. And then your mouth got in line with your thoughts and you began to speak the things that your mind was saying before you gave up. And then you started saying, well, I don't know. I don't see the results. I don't know why this ain't working. I'm tired. I guess God's not for me. He's for others, but not for me. I'm just going to give up. And you let those words come out of your mouth, and then you have the result or the fruit of what your mouth says. And you end up quitting, and, and then you begin to feel sorry for yourself. I remember there was a story that I'd heard 
uh, years ago that I, I think it was Keith Moore had talked about. He was talking about there was a Rama student, a Rama uh, Bible school out in Tulsa, Oklahoma, actually Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And this student had, had just felt like that he was called to the ministry and wanted to go to Bible school. Well, you know, when you go to Bible school for two or three years, it's a big commitment. It requires discipline. It requires that you've set those years aside of your life to be able to learn what you ultimately feel like you need to learn to go into the ministry. And so it's a big commitment, requires discipline, and things sometimes there is sacrifices to be made in order to get to a greater, uh, a greater day. And so he was talking about this young man that, had uh, had went through the the entry, you know, when he when he first began school and talked about how much he wanted to be in the ministry and how, all the things he wanted to do and the effect that he wanted to have upon the kingdom of God and and several months in he 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 decides that he wants to quit and so they had an exit interview as to why was he quitting why was he letting go and uh, brother Keith said the young man said uh, do you know how long the reason he's quitting he said. Do you know how long it's been since I had a steak dinner? He said, I've been eating, eating these ramen noodles, you know, uh, for, for all this time because I, can't, I don't have enough money and I can't, the, what my work or part-time job just isn't enough to take care of uh, giving me the things that I want. And he said, when I was back home, he said, my mom would fix me a steak every week. Well, Brother Keith said, what do you say to somebody like that? And he said, the thing that you say to them is, bye-bye because you've just proven that you're not disciplined enough to be able to be in the ministry. And the point that I want you to see is this, is when people let go, they give up, it's because they're not disciplined. They haven't thought it through. They haven't made the commitment in order to show that stand trials and difficulties and, and temptations that they're going to experience. Folks, people are going to go through, you're going to go through difficulties, you're going to go through trials, but you have to stay with it. You've got to be disciplined to say, I won't give up. I will not faint, and I know that by not fainting, I know that I will reap the harvest that God has for me if I'll stay with it. And so I see other examples of where Daniel... You remember when Daniel began to pray, he was fasting for 21 days and he prayed for, you know, seeking the Lord as to, to, to find some answers. And what happened was on the 21st day, an angel stood before Daniel and he said, Daniel, I heard you on the first day that you prayed, but the prince of Persia withstood me 21 days. Now, what if Daniel had given up? What if Daniel had let go of what it was that God ultimately had for him. He had the answer to the question and he had a solution to the problem that was in front of Daniel. But folks, if you let go after 10 days or 12 days or 15 days, you don't know that your answer is literally just around the corner, a day or two away, an hour or two away, and we give up. So that's why he tells us, uh, when having done all to stand in Ephesians, what, what else are we supposed to do? Having done all to stand, what do you do? Stand therefore. In other words, he's saying you just continue to stay with what it is that you're believing. Don't let go of your belief. Now, if you're believing based upon the Word of God, you have, you have God's Word on something and you just haven't seen something or you've, you've had a struggle in, in 2020, well, join the club. We have all been through a struggle. We've all been through a difficult time. But we're committed here. We're, we're, we've made the decision that we're not going to give up. We're not going to let go. Listen, during this whole pandemic thing, we've heard about other churches that were, were falling apart. And, 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 and it's understandable. Naturally speaking, you could look at it and go, it'd be easy because the, the attendance was, was down to 50%. And that's, that's startling when you're, you're used to a certain number. And then it goes down to 25 or 30%. And you have very few people in the congregation. And then, uh, and then maybe your, your giving begins to be affected by that because people's incomes are affected. And, and so all these things, it would be easy to let go and give up. But folks, we just made the decision that we weren't going to give up. We're, we're going to fight. We, we, you know, we've got a fighting spirit about us. 
we, you know, we're not fighting against God, but we're fighting the devil. And, and the way that you fight the devil is you don't give up on believing God. You don't let go of what it is that, that God has told you. And so we've decided that we'd hold on to the promises of God and that we would continue to be here. You, we just made a decision at Kingsway Church. If there wasn't nobody else going to show up, it'd be uh, you know me and my wife and my daughters and, you know, and uh, a, a few key people around us, and we'll be here in order to uh, minister the Word of God so that it can get out and, and, and even if it has to be on Facebook for a while. But we just said, we're not giving up, and we've made that decision. And then I also thought about somebody else. It, he was even in his old age at the time when God promised him that his, his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky or the grains of sand on, 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 you know, in the, at the beach. He said that he was going to have numerous descendants. And so Abraham didn't have a son. And, 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 and then, you know, he was told that it was going to come by way of Sarah. It wasn't going to come through somebody else. But, you know, for a little while, uh, Abraham got sidetracked, started thinking about maybe it'd be Ishmael through Hagar. But that wasn't what God's plan was. And in his old age, he was promised. And the Bible said that he believed God even when he didn't have a reason to believe God. In other words, he looked at his body, he looked at Sarah's body, and he said, man, there's a problem here. We don't, you know, people our age don't have children. But he still believed, even against hope. In other words, when it didn't look like, naturally speaking, there'd be any hope, he still believed God, and he refused to let go of that. He refused to quit believing. And you know what happened was one day, Isaac came onto the scene and God rewarded his faithfulness and he rewarded his faith and he rewarded his discipline when he chose to still believe God. Let me turn and look at that just for one quick minute here in Romans chapter 4. He tells us, referencing Abraham's account there in verse 18, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. That had been spoken to him and he believed even against hope. It goes on and it says, So shall your seed be, and being not weary, or not, I'm sorry, not being, and being not weak in faith. If you're not weak in faith, what does that make you? That make you strong in faith, right? He considered not his own body now dead. That means his body... Is Consider the fact that his body was dead a rep from a reproductive standpoint when he was about a hundred years old and neither did he consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20, it says that he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Now watch this. And being fully persuaded that what God had promised that he was able also to perform and it was because of that imputed to him for righteousness. In other words, God considered him righteous because he chose to believe him in spite of having any reason to believe God naturally. And folks, that's what I want you to understand tonight is even though you, you might not have a reason to believe God naturally speaking, I want to encourage you, don't give up, don't quit. For in due season you'll reap if you faint not, if you don't let go, if you don't get tired and, and quit. Just keep on keeping on, amen? Keep on believing God. Keep on staying with God. Keep on uh, doing the things that God wants you to do and keep believing whatever it is you believe. If you're believing for a better job with more money, keep on believing that. God's going to show up for you. If you believe in God for a child, maybe, maybe you haven't had a child like Abraham had, don't give up. Keep believing God. Keep seeking the heart of God and, and just, just keep trusting that God is going to show up for you. You say, well, I'm too old. Well, Abraham was too old too. Well, but he's an Old Testament patriarch. Well, you know, do you think that God loved Abraham any more than he loves you? And the answer to that is no. Just, but what he does reward is faith. The Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. For he that cometh unto him must believe that he is, and watch this, that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. In other words, folks, just stay hooked up with God 
don't get tired of doing the right thing and, and don't get tired of, of believing God and expecting God to show up when you don't see the answers or when you don't have a, a, an obvious result to the thing that you're looking for. Just keep trusting the Lord and He's going to show up for you. Amen? And so uh, Abraham could have felt sorry for himself. He could have gotten tired and said, well, there's no point in, 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 in believing any longer. We're past the age of childbearing. And uh, that's just the way that it is. It's our job to believe God, and it's God's job to, to perform the thing that we're believing based upon His Word. See, don't get caught up in, in thinking that somehow or another that you're going to manufacture the results. Uh, your job is to believe and not quit and keep pressing on, and God's job is to show up and do the job, and that's exactly what will happen. He says in, in Hebrews chapter 6, that it is through faith and patience that we inherit the promises. And that, I'll be honest with you, that is one of the more difficult things for me to really grab a hold of is the patience because I'm not the most patient person yet. You could ask my wife, you could ask my kids, and sometimes they'll say, you know, honey or daddy, you're not as patient as you could be. I know that. And so when it comes to the things of God, it, it's kind of that I can't allow my impatience on other things to translate over to trusting God. I have to just know that even though I haven't seen the answers yet, even though the, the, the thing that I'm expecting hasn't come to pass yet, I have to be patient knowing that due season, watch now, is coming. Due season is coming. It just hasn't maybe come yet. But it will come because he said, don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not, if you don't give up. And i I just be honest with you, I don't like quitters anyway. I mean, I, if you're a quitter, I still love you, but I don't like your, your quitting attitude. I don't like to be involved with quitters because quitters end up losing. And I don't like losing. I, I know I'm a competitive person. I like to win at anything that I do. It doesn't matter if I'm playing some board game, you know, even with my kids. I'm like, hey, I'm out to win. You know, I don't, I don't like giving out participation trophies. I don't like that, never like that, because I don't believe that's the way the Lord is. The Lord wants winners. He's a winner. He wants us to be a winner. He's made us winners. Amen. He's made us a winner through Jesus Christ. And if we just will not give up, he will cause us to be on the winning side at the end of every battle that we face. So I, I, we just have to learn to be patient through the process and trust the process that God is working through. And then the last the, the event that I want to remind you of this evening that, I, that came to my mind as I was thinking on this was the story of David. You remember when uh, Samuel uh, had gotten a word from the Lord that uh, he was not pleased with Saul and so he was going to remove Saul from being king, and he was going to anoint someone that was greater than Saul to become king. And so through that, he tells him to go to the house of Jesse, told Samuel to go to the house of Jesse. So Jesse, uh, uh, Samuel goes to Jesse's house, and one by one, he has all the sons that are at Jesse's house at that moment to stand before him. And he came you know, to Eliab who must have been a, a man of great stature. There was maybe something about him from the perspective of, of, you know, just physically looking like a king. You know, we have an idea of what we think a king should look like. It's not always the, you know, it wasn't always the case in, in, in old times, and you watch some of these history, history shows. But we have an idea of what a king should look like, and we kind of expect him to be, a, a, a man's man you know what I mean I mean somebody that's big and knows how to fight and battle and I mean he's just you know he's he's just a bad looking guy you know what I mean by that well apparently Eliab was that kind of man because when he stood before Samuel Samuel's thoughts were this and he voiced them out and he said surely the Lord's anointed is before me but how many of you know that that is not the way that God sees things? In fact, about it, the Lord spoke to Samuel and he said, He is not the one, for I don't look at, at the same way at a man that, that man looks at a man. He says, but I look at the heart of the man. 
And I'm not saying that Eliab was a bad man, but he just didn't have the heart of God. He didn't have the heart of God like his brother had. And so, and it kind of showed up because what happened was, well, let me just, before I go to that, remind you. So he goes through all the brothers and he says, God, God said no to every one of them. And he says, do you have any more sons? I, sh I hope I'm not at the wrong house. And he said, no, uh, we have one more. I have one more, but he's out in the field tending and taking care of the sheep. And so Samuel says, well, go get him. He said, I ain't going to rest until he comes in. And then as soon as David walked in, the, in through the door and into the house, I mean, I, I, I imagine what he might have smelled like, maybe what he looked like. He's been out there with the sheep for a while, and he walks in. And the Lord spoke to Samuel, and he said, The Lord's anointed is before you. He looks at David, and David it even gives a description in some other places that he was ruddy, his complexion, he's a kid, he doesn't look like a king, he probably doesn't talk like a king, but he had the heart of God in him. And so Samuel stood up in the midst of his brother. You have to just go back and read that account. But Samuel stood up in the midst of his brother's. And he had the horn of, uh, of oil. You know, you, you can imagine the, a horn filled with anointing oil. And he took that anointing oil and dumped it all over David and anointed David king right in front of his brothers. Now, why is that significant? It's significant because of this. You know where David went after he was anointed? Many people would say that if you're anointed, I mean, at that moment you'd say, hey, I'm anointed king. I need to go take my place. I need to take my rightful place and become the king. What did David do? And I'm going somewhere with this, so just hang, to, hang on. What did David do? He went back to the field to tend to the sheep. And then later on, you know the story of David and Goliath. Well, Saul had his, his mighty men out there, and Goliath was taunting them. And he was, he was telling them all these, you know, different things. Come out and fight with me. If, if you defeat me, then we'll serve you. And if I defeat you, then you serve us. And nobody would do it. And you know who was there at the time? Eliab was there, and he was still in fear. And see, God knows what he's doing. He knew that, that there was fear inside of Eliab. He did not have the heart of a king. He didn't have the heart of God. But he knew David did. And when David showed up, in front of the battle and he heard the things that Goliath was spouting out he said who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God I will fight him well you know the story David fought Goliath and killed Goliath but watch this this is what I want you to see but even after he was anointed and even after he killed Goliath do you know what he did he still tended the sheep and then he became the servant watch now the servant of Saul, the current king. You say, well, why didn't David call out for his rightful place? Because David knew something about Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. If you don't give up, just keep doing what you know is right. He knew his due season as the anointed king would, would transpire and would take place and that he would become the king. He knew that because he was anointed to be king by God and Samuel had, had, had the word from God. He, he knew that the time was going to come, that it was going to take place, but he knew that that moment wasn't it. So in other words, he had to discipline himself to have patience and have faith in the promises of God. God had promised him through Samuel that he would become king. He anointed him by Samuel to become king the time just was not right yet. And folks, even though you're in the middle of stuff, you got problems and difficulties and challenges, I want to encourage you, do not be weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you do not give up, if you faint not. Keep holding on and keep moving forward with God. Keep trusting in the promises of God. Find out what the Bible has to say about you and the promises that He's given you. And you watch what will happen. God will show himself strong for you. And in due season, you'll reap if you don't give up. Amen. Well, I pray that this message has just been an encouragement to you. I want to encourage you, don't give up. I know sometimes uh, anything can get tiresome. And, and, and even being a Christian sometimes 
and, and doing things that you know that are the right things to do can get tiresome. I know that. I feel the same way. There was a friend of mine years ago. I was, it had been, I'd been in uh, pastoring for a few, a few years at the time and now have been in it for over 15 years. But at that particular time, I was tired. I felt like, man, that these people don't appreciate me. I'm doing all, making all this effort and trying to, uh, to make an impact in their lives. And I just was, just one of those days, I was feeling sorry for myself. And so I was down, and I texted a friend of mine, and I said, have you ever felt like just giving up? You ever felt like just quitting? He said, oh, I've quit at least 100 times. I just haven't left the building. And so sometimes you can feel like quitting. You can feel like giving up because it feels like, you're not getting the results that you're, that you're expecting or believing for. But I'm telling you right now, if you just will, continue doing the right thing. Don't be weary in well-doing, but in due season, you'll reap if you faint not. Just hang in there, keep walking with God, and you watch God show himself strong for you in your due season. God bless you. Uh, we encourage you, if you can, come out this Sunday to Sunday service. I've got a, a, a new series that I'm starting that the Lord gave me some direction on that I believe is going to help our church for 2021. And uh, the Lord even told me, don't worry about two or three, four messages. Don't, don't get hung up in, in doing that on this series. This series is that important to get your mind focused on what I need you to know for 2021. So I want to encourage you, if you can, come out and be a part of it. And uh, we'd love to see you. And we believe that God is doing wonderful things here at Kingsway Church. God bless you. Thank you for being with me tonight. And I'm praying that God's very best will be yours. Amen.